Hi, this is DJ Tina, host of HMTV Canada Easy. On the phone with me today is a really awesome band called Chase Nine. Hi, congratulations on your latest CD release, Breaking Silence. Shame on anyone if they haven't invested in the CD because your music kicks serious butt. Can you tell our audience some of the highlights of Breaking Silence? Um, yeah, sure. This is Matt, the uh, lead singer. Um, overall, making the album itself was, was a major highlight for us because what we heard in our heads uh, with the songs was actually either matched or improved when, uh, when it was recorded. So working with um, Peter Beauchard, who was the producer on the album, he did a, a really great job capturing the essence of each of the songs and also pulling out the, uh, the best of each of us. So it was, uh, it was a really great experience for us. We actually went in the studio with, with over 20 songs, but we, we, had to, we decided to stop at about 13 because we, we felt like we had uh, some really great songs that deserved to be heard, and we didn't want to uh, you know, sort of dilute the rest of the, the album by making it any longer than 13 songs. Tired. And uh, yeah, and Rob <laughs> says we are tired. But um, we, as well, we had basically we had one rule, and I mean, we it was kind of a, a mission statement for recording the album, and that was pretty simple. It was just if it didn't kick our asses, it didn't make the cut. We didn't waste any time on anything that didn't really grab us. So um, it was it was a really really great a great time for us. And uh, the studio ignition sound studio where we recorded it became a second house or a second home to us. And um, being there was pretty amazing because it was uh, you were free from distractions from the outside world. I mean, you, there was not even cell reception out there that you could get. So <laughs> when you were there, it was pretty easy to lose yourself in the moment. And uh, it was also a lot of fun just to, to hang out there. And you could make as little or as much noise as you wanted to at any time of the day. And it, was, it, it didn't matter to anybody. You, you're only hurting yourself. So we did that a fair bit. <laughs> So overall, what would you say the main challenges were in producing the C with regard to recording, mixing, and mastering? Um, there wasn't really anything too crazy. We, uh, we moved the project, actually, uh, from Sonica Disturbia Studios, which is uh, Peter, Peter Beauchard's home studio. Um, we did a lot of the, uh, the, the groundwork at, at his home studio, and then we decided to move to a much bigger studio, which was Ignition Sound Studios. And uh, we were a little concerned, I think, all of us were a little concerned initially because we felt like we had such a good vibe going that uh, we didn't want to change the venue and end up killing the vibe in the process. But um, in turn, what happened is actually it, it really it, it took the whole project to a new level. And so that was that was pretty awesome for us. Um, as far as mastering goes, we actually sent it out to a few different people to uh, to master. What we did was just just select a, a, a couple of the key songs and sent them out to a bunch of different people, and uh, they sent us back their their submissions as far as what they were hearing on the mastering side of it. And we ended up deciding to go with uh, Phil Dimitro from the Lacquer Channel, who again did a really great job with uh, with everything, and I mean he was just really easy to work with. And so him and Peter actually uh, worked very closely together to make sure that the the end product was exactly what we were hearing in our heads. It was it was pretty awesome. And we love him. <laughs> <laughs> now have you been on any tours or do you have any upcoming tours to promote your latest cd it all feels kind of like one big tour <laughs> but uh no honestly what what we're looking at right now is um we're actually in serious talks um regarding a tour in europe and uh as well we have some some very real opportunities which could take us across canada in the immediate future here uh, but we're, we don't have anything absolutely set in stone yet, so we, we don't want to let the cat out of the bag or curse uh, what we've been working on. But we definitely hope to uh, to tour Europe, and we, we are very serious about heading across uh, Canada as well and, and even into the U.S. Um, it's just a matter of kind of lining things up, which is what we're in the process of doing right now. That's awesome. Can, can you tell us about the deal that Trace9 has with Thunderstruck Films? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a non-exclusive agreement which uh, it basically gives them the right to use certain tracks of ours within a certain time frame and on certain projects, which they, uh, they give us clearance of ahead of time. Um, for those of you that don't know about Thunderstruck Films, they basically they cater to uh, extreme snowmobiling, and that's kind of their market. And to say that they do things on a big scale would be uh, a pretty serious understatement. Um, they, they, they really do a good job 
Jim Phelan there is uh, is our main contact, and he was right from the get go. I mean, from what what we know, he's kind of the the head honcho there, and he was the one who contacted us directly. Um, and he was very interested in using a bunch of our tracks. And uh, the one that really struck a nerve with their fan base was Ready to Roll. And uh, it actually ended up becoming the official teaser for uh, Thunderstruck 6. And um, they've actually contacted us again and asked us for, for new music for um, a best of project that they're putting together. So we, I mean, we were already... We were very excited about that, and uh, and they added about four or five of our songs in the, yeah. the actual film. Yeah, they added quite a bit of our material, and uh, as I said before, they do everything on a really great scale. I mean, when you buy a DVD, you actually get a soundtrack with it, uh, so it's a really top-notch package that they put together. And as well, I mean, they've done wonders for us all over the U.S. We've had so many fans turned on to us by the Thunderstruck films that it was kind of like, holy, I don't think we realized how big it was when we first started, but it really turned out to be a pretty awesome experience for us so far. Now, do they have a regular show that airs on TV once a week or once a month? Not that, I, not that I'm aware of. Um, I think mostly what they do is they, they do some pretty big budget films, kind of like Warren Miller is for skiing. That's what they are for okay. extreme snowmobiling. And um, they, they just put together these great big projects and uh, they come out with a, a movie. I th- it's about once a year, I think, is what they tend to do. Um, and they do like a big release tour. They go right across the U.S. with uh, you know screenings for all their uh, their loyal fan base. And uh, it's it's really it's quite the undertaking. Okay, I think I get you there. Any anything planned for video production for breaking the silent song tracks? Yeah, actually, there is. We uh, we've just finalized uh, the video concept for. Uh, for Ready to Roll, which we're going to use as our lead-off single. And right now we're in the process of working out the shoot details. Um, we're using, as it now, as it stands right now, it looks like we're not we're not on the dotted line or anything like that, but it looks like we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be working with Chad Archibald from Black Fawn Films, um, who does a lot of really, he's done a lot of really good videos, high-end videos in this area. And uh, he's got a really good flow to his work and um, as well. It's kind of, uh, it pays to know people. I mean, he was, our producer had done a lot of work with him on some films. So it was kind of a nice, uh, a nice offset was to get in, uh, to get working together and actually to get talking about different projects. And this is going to be the first thing we do with, uh, with them. I can imagine the music video from the song track St. Lucifer-like. The imagery comes out in this song like a camera. Do you think you'll be making a video out of that song track in the future? You know what? I don't, I don't know yet. Um... We've kind of been dictate well, well we've we've been selecting our singles through um, really kind of digital downloads and that's why Ready to Roll for us was uh, sort of the no brainer right off the bat because it's had such a it's had such good exposure and it's been downloaded so many times. Uh, we might do that again, um, although we may choose to change gears a little bit too. I mean, the the really cool thing about our album and. It's also it, it can be kind of a double-edged sword, but the fact is, is the album is so strong uh, that collectively we have a hard time picking our favorite tracks. <laughs> and uh, and it's been the same with management, and it's been the same with everybody that that's really heard it. They all say the same thing. It's like my God, from start to finish, you know, it's a really solid album, and you guys are gonna have a hard time picking a single. <laughs> and the that's overtones so from St. Louis for like uh, they might be a little hard to capture. Yeah. Well, you know what. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Saint Lucifer, like being what it is about, it, it could be, uh, it could be kind of a fun video to do too. <laughs> a little controversial. <laughs> I agree, but all your songs are very polished off your album. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Who is the mastermind in Trace Nine that writes their songs, and is it controversial, real-world events or issues that you express in your lyrical content? Um, I would say if you were to ask about who the mastermind is, uh, it would depend on which one of us you were talking to at that moment. (laughs) 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 Whose birthday was coming up? Hold on a second. Who's not in the room right now? (laughs) No, you know what? It's... One of the one of the really cool things about this band is that uh, we've always done things so it's been very equal um, right down the middle. We check our egos at the door and we focus on the song. If it's if it's we're writing, what we're doing is we're focusing on the song. If we're playing live, we're focusing on the show. 
Um, it, it, you know, for us, it's all about kind of whatever it is that we're doing at that point in time, being making it the best that we can possibly make it. And a lot of times that requires people to play maybe simpler parts than they would like, or it may require them to actually in certain parts not play, right, to help with the dynamics or whatever. So it's it's pretty cool. We just try and put the song and the band ahead of ourselves, and we've been really lucky that way because it we it results in actually a very peaceful uh, a peaceful resolution to a lot of things, which where other bands may you know kind to beat the hell out of each other on things <laughs> we just kind of focus in on what's important at that point in time and um yeah, whoever comes up with something cool we like we just build on it yeah and so we do everything right down the middle as far as it being equal and it really it works very well it's uh it's been a really great experience. I mean, I don't think any one of us had desires of becoming, you know, the mastermind or the solo artist or anything like that. But uh, not yet. We, we all. <laughs> I forgot. Like, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna talk later. Yeah. <laughs> we we, uh, we all we all know our strengths, and um, I think that's it. We, and that's the other side of it too. Is I mean, we dig deep and we look to each yeah, other where that person has their strengths, and so that that becomes a really that becomes a really important part of what we do. But as far as the, the lyrics go. Um, I, being the singer, I write the, the lyrics, and as far as, you know, what they're based on, I mean, you're exactly right, they're, the majority of them are based on uh, controversial real-world events, and, um, you know, what we try to do is, we try to keep the mentality that people think in pictures, and so what we try to do is almost paint, you know, we, we try and paint the song uh, for them, I guess, paint, paint the song into a story. And uh, that's kind of what we try to do. But the, the other side of that as well is that we try to, when we're trying to, to get that point across or that story across, even though it may have been inspired by a single source, we try to relate it to as many people in as many situations as we possibly can. So Yeah, it could mean a couple different things to a couple different people, really. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. I've seen some of your live performances locally in town here, and they totally kick ass. Now, are you working on new songs at the moment, or will you be doing more live shows in the area? Well, we, um, we've we had actually, the, the reality is is that we, we are always working on new songs. And I mean, what we've done is um, we went through some contract negotiations here the last few months. Uh, and in the downtime that we had when we were focused on the negotiations and finalizing the agreements, we, uh, we started to write again and we really started to focus on that because what we're trying to do as an artist is, is sort of, stay one step ahead of everybody else. I mean, we thought if we bring this album out and, uh, you know, six months in, they want us to bring another album out, are we going to be ready for that? And so we tried to stay one step ahead of the game and uh, we had a lot of, really a lot of great ideas that we were excited about. And uh, it was kind of hilarious. I mean, once we tapped into it, it was just like holy crap, we have another album's worth of material that's ready to rock, you know, so... You know, we almost want to play them more than the old ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we to answer your question, we're kind of focused on, um, you know, we're focused on everything right now. Obviously, you want to keep a show tight. We want to play, uh, you know, some really great performances, get the album out there, and, and some great venues and things like that. At the same time, when we don't have those shows lined up, what we're looking to do is, uh, is just keep working and keep busy, so... Have you teased your audience lately with your new material? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, we did actually. We did a show a couple of weeks back and it had been a while since we had played um, in, in this area. And uh, so what we ended up doing was we threw, was it three or four of the new ones in? Yeah, like three, three of them. Yeah, I think we had three three brand new ones in there that nobody had ever heard before. And um, I'll tell you what, we were completely blown away by the reaction we got. I mean, people were going nuts with us like they had heard it, you know, 7,000 times. It was, it was pretty awesome. Now, your new material, is it going to be pretty much the same as your previous album? Or is there like a different mix of sounds in, in the new one? Ooh, that's a good question. Um... I don't know. I think, you know, I. it's kind of funny. As we were right, making the album, we were progressing along the, you know, all along the way we were progressing. And the later songs that were added to that album were kind of, uh, we're kind of still in that mindset. So, you know, for for those of you that love Ready to Roll and for you, for those of you that love um, uh, St. Lucifer, like, this next album is is kind of in that same vein. It's going to be that this this next slew of material is right up that same alley. It's at that same intensity level, and uh, so we're we're pretty pumped about it. I mean, it, it's what people are going to expect, but we also feel as if it's it's a new chapter for us. We're doing some things which are new for us, and uh, uh, you know, some different feels and things like that. So we're pretty excited about it. Okay, can you give us a little hint, like maybe a little bit more heavier or hardcore? Well, I used uh, two drumsticks instead of one on these new ones. 
<laughs> it's gonna be, you know, rocking. Okay. I would have to say, I, I would think that we would say it would probably be heavier. Yeah, it's gonna be a little heavier. It, it's gonna be heavier, and there's and there's actually there's gonna be a couple of tracks which are gonna be way like more straight ahead than we've ever done. So I guess more straight ahead, just freaking giving her rock than we'd ever done either. I, I so it's more aggressive. It's aggressive. It is it's aggressive. very aggressive. Yeah. 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 It's it's yeah. Okay. These that's right. But yeah. soft and sweet all yeah. at the same time. You can like handle slow dance. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. The concepts of the songs are still kind of the same same vein. Oh, wow. Um And you know the the actual recording side of it, we don't know yet on the actual sounds and everything. But for the songs in general, they're going to be you know very fast paced, in your face, uh, aggressive live songs yeah you're gonna want to jump to it like you do with with some of the other stuff that we've already done and and as well i mean i'm going to tell you the outset of some of these uh negotiations which we were going through fueled a lot of uh things in us which weren't necessarily happy so oh, I see. <laughs> okay does that answer your question or was that really long-winded <laughs> that answered my question but i can't wait till the new material comes out because i really look forward to listening to it we love you <laughs> <laughs> has trace nine been successful in finding a record label yet um what we have done actually is um we have gotten sick and tired of wasting thousands of dollars negotiating meaningless agreements and uh so what we've done is we've kind of taken the bull by the horns and we've entered into a joint venture with uh with some other people um and formed a company out of that and uh as such this this company i mean it's we're lucky enough though that we've we've got a broad enough spectrum with the people we've connected with that uh, we've got you know we've got things happening in sweden and la and in canada so we're we're pretty pretty excited about it uh but we are more or less taking the bull by the horns and uh relying heavily on uh on our management to um you know to to get us where we have to be and to do the things that they've promised us that they can do so now has that company that you formed or are they affiliated with any merchandising like uh, distribution there's no there's no direct affiliation with anybody in the distribution side or even in the the merchandise side of it uh what it is more or less is it's industry people who have much like yourself fallen in love with the album and if you can believe it actually us which is i know freaky but uh (laughs) But no, it's it's one of those things where we're really kind of relying heavily on on some of the industry contacts that we've been fortunate enough to make over the last few years, and uh, and we're really building on that now and establishing that we're actually making some of these more key contacts. We're making them a part of of our. Uh, of our venture and our company and it's going to be kind of like I said a joint effort so there's no direct affiliation to any merchandising companies or uh, or distribution companies but we suspect of course that that's all going to come into play I mean I will tell you that we're we're in uh, contract talks right now with various distribution companies so that's uh, that's a very real possibility here in the near future I think that's really important for the pressing of CDs because you definitely want to sell merchandise and CDs at your live shows Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, for us, we've played enough shows to realize that that's where that's where you're going to make your money. I mean, uh, you know, at, at our state, especially being a support act out on tour, you're not going to get paid much if if anything. So you're going to have to really put on a good show and make sure that you're uh, you're selling merch and selling CDs. And so that's that's one of the things that we're doing uh, to ensure that that's going to happen. And we're we're trying to keep a uh, one step ahead of the pace. I mean, we're actually doing things right now. We're revamping our website. Um, it's we're going to make it storefront capable. Uh, we're looking at having secured um, you know secured payment there and things like that. So. We're trying to take the power back a little bit and uh, and make sure that we're in control of, of these elements. I mean, I think one of the things that the last few months have taught us is that uh, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. And that's why we've sort of taken this initiative. So basically, you're paying for all the material right now on your own. Yeah. I mean, essentially, yeah. right now, we are, uh, when it comes to the financial end of things, we are you know, virtually self-sufficient. Independent. Um, save that, of course, for the... the uh, interest and the, the different people who are involved with us uh but but are not directly affiliated with the company i mean as, as i'm sure you know we're sponsored by dot on shaft guitars mm-hmm. and uh, uh mike carparelli at dot on shaft guitars has 
you know, he's gone to bat for us numerous times and he's, you know, he's like the greatest guy in the world. He's such a good friend and he's like, he's a brother to us, him and uh, his wife, Nat. Uh, of course, she'd be a sister to us, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a really great experience and through connections like that, um, you know, we're really, we're able to do a lot of things. I mean, it really elevates our stature and gives us a really good strong foothold in many different things. Do you have any other endorsements with any other companies? Just in talks right now, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Thing. You know, it's it's sort of the same thing um, as as some of the distribution side of it. Those those talks are in place right now. I mean, there's certainly uh, a, a fair bit of interest on both sides to try and solidify the deals. But at this point, we don't want to curse anything by stating that we're talking to anybody directly or for legal reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell our listening audience what bands that Trace Nine has shared the stage with in the past and currently? Sure. Yeah. Um, what we'll, we'll give you just a handful of different people we've done this with and uh, I guess now some of the more bigger bands we played with them when they were just on their way up sort of in the same spot as where we are now but State of Shock is a, is a band we played with before a great bunch of guys um, Headley Matthew Good um, Theory of a Dead Man Faber Drive Stabilo, uh, Social Code, Biff Naked, The Salads, Robin Black, Meredith Mer- 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 Brooks, um, yeah, just yeah, Helix, the you know, Killer Dwarfs, yeah. <laughs> Basically, anyone that's passed through or been around Ontario, we we look at link up with them. The, the Mud Men, um, <laughs> out of your mouth, you know. It's kind of funny. One of the things about being in this band is that we've been we have been around. We've been on the circuit for quite a while, and we've seen a lot of bands that we used to play with on a regular basis sort of throw in the towel. And uh, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, I think we're we're proud to still be here and still enjoy still be enjoying what we do. It's not always the easiest thing, and uh, there's a lot, you certainly hit lots of roadblocks. But it's for us, I mean. The the drug is really the music, so it's uh, you know it's it, we're pretty happy to, to be a group and to be doing what we're doing. Now, was it in 2007 that Trace Nine was nominated for the best live performance by the Toronto Independent Music Awards? Yeah, we were nominated for uh, for best live performance and as well uh, for metal um, for being a metal band. And uh, for us as well, it's kind of odd. I mean, we don't really consider ourselves to be a metal band, but um, it was an honor anyway to be, con- to, you know, to be nominated. So uh, that was it was pretty cool. Uh, things like that, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, it's it's not the reason why you do it. Certainly, is it's not exactly for the titles and that sort of thing. But it is nice to to be appreciated. Um, and so that was a that was a pretty cool experience for us. We actually had a uh, we had a good stint there. I mean, we went to the award show on like the Wednesday night, and then the Thursday we were playing in like Wednesday and the Friday we were in London and the Saturday we were somewhere else and it was it was kind of a, a kickoff for us. We had a good time with it, and uh, kind of actually, you know, kind of got the feeling of what it would be like to uh, to take a break from touring and go to the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about this year? Did you enter Timma this year? No, we didn't. Okay, no. That was one of the things I was curious about. Can you tell our audience about your gig at the second annual ninety one point five The Beat FM Rock The Block concert held at the Civic Square in downtown Kitchener, Ontario? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it was amazing. Um, you know, there's different estimates throughout the day that you hear as far as the the population or the crowd size. But I mean, it was we've heard everything from between like six to what sixteen thousand people. Yeah. You know, and uh, it was pretty awesome. First thing we did when we got there was uh, you know thoroughly enjoyed the look of the stage and wait you know kind of looked at it in anticipation of getting on there all day and just absolutely giving it. But one of the things we did was we walked up and down the street where the crowd was lined up from like nine o'clock in the morning on and we handed out stickers and talked to everybody and just said you know come to the front of the stage go crazy with us you know and uh it was that that was pretty cool i mean just to actually get up close and personal with so many people right before the show and um and then once the, the, i'll just say this the production was amazing the stage management was done kevin bush he did the stage management he's the same guy who does everything for team and everything the guy is he is such a He's, he's a pro. He's a pro. I mean, it was a it was an absolute pleasure to work with everybody that was there that day because the sound was absolutely amazing. The timing was perfect between the bands. 
Um, every, everybody was so accommodating, all the staff, the event staff, everybody was just so great to us. For such a big show, it was flawless. Yeah, it really was. And, uh, and as well, I mean, the fans were unbelievable. We, we made like so many fans that day. It was, it was just insane for us. But one of the things we did as well was we, we told everybody, you know, kind of second last song that, uh, we'd be at our, our merch booth and that they'd be welcome to come down and meet us. And we ended up signing autographs and having pictures taken for about two and a half hours hours after our performance so uh it was great it was a great experience for us that sounds really awesome now yeah. I, i've got one question in particular do you sell t9 license plates at your live shows <laughs> not yet <laughs> <laughs> no but we some of the some of the guys in the band actually made license plates in their former uh <laughs> their former occupation <laughs> <laughs> so <you> <laughs> now will that be a featured item when you uh, start selling merchandise again are you hot for a license plate well kind of yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, now are we talking about a, like an actual license plate? Or are we talking about the license plate covers? Oh, or right. Right. The license plate for cars. Okay, the, you want the frame? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because we don't print uh, Ontario license plates. So that's against the law. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You know what? We'll have to look into that for you. Now that we know that you're hot for it, maybe there's other uh, pretty ladies such as yourselves out there uh, that want that. I think they do, yeah, because that's cool. That's the only problem, though, with a license plate. It could distract people. There could be a lot more rear-enders happening. Oh, well, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> what? <laughs> the truth. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. But they're cool. I think they're really cool to have your favorite band on uh, your license plate. So I think I'd, I'd like it for, for my own car. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of cheesy, isn't it? I probably should. I'm not really like <laughs> it. Oh, I think they're cool. <laughs> All right, we're going to look into that for you, Tina. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. Trace Knight's music is creating a huge buzz in the media currently. Where can fans request your music on radio? That's a good point. Um, well, right now we are... 100.3. 100 point, locally, you can request it at 100.3. Uh, that's uh, CKMS, I think is what it is, CKMS. Yeah. And um, as well, we are talking right now to uh, 88.3, which is kind of collectively, it's been our favorite radio station because of what they're playing. I mean, uh, you know, we're kind of digging everything that they're playing there. Is, uh, it's kind of nice to get away from the usual stuff and hear some new things on there. And that's CJIQ seems to be playing a lot of really cool stuff, so we're pretty pretty pumped about getting on there um as well there's you know there's a bunch of internet radio stations that you can request it on and you can find our, our music in so many other places i don't really have a list off the top of my head but i'll tell you that one of the things that we are planning to do here is to release a single to uh to radio both college and commercial and um and we'll be begging for people to be calling so i mean please do us a favor if, <laughs> any radio station if you like our music and if you like the band uh do us a favor and uh uh, and you know, contact us through you know Facebook, MySpace, um, whatever. Send us your email because we, with the revamp of the website that we're working on right now, there's going to be some very cool VIP, you know, sort of access to our fan club. And um, there's going to be a lot of things that uh, that the fan club is going to be privy to that just general public people won't be. So uh, th that's certainly one of the things we want to do is really increase our database and and make our website a spot where people can kind of talk about the same things that fire us up, and that is you know a lot of controversial topics and issues and things like that. So we're looking at making this more of a community. Uh, so that's that's going to be a very cool thing for us. That's awesome. More of a social networking um, community. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's that's a good way to go, actually. Thanks. We're, we're going to try it, but, uh, you know, keep it to yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's on the interview, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's but that's, that's really a good thing, what you're going to do, because it's going to make your website dynamic. Well, you know what? I mean, we kind of looked at it as if, you have to look at things and what sets you apart. And I mean, one of the things that sets us apart is that our music is, it, it comes with messages and it comes from, from events and stories that everybody knows mm -hmm. and, and are familiar with. And so, you know, we thought, how cool would that be to actually get people's opinions and thoughts and, and, you know, what can we do to keep people coming back on a more regular basis? And this is one of the things that we thought would be a really cool thing. And, um, you know, outside of that, I mean, we actually filmed the making of the album. Um, and, and it's kind of cool because people that listen to the music, a lot of times they think that we're, you know, sort of dark and depressed individuals. But the truth <laughs> is, I mean, we're like some of the happiest guys you're ever going to meet in your life. Um, but, but certain things piss us off. I mean, and so those are, that's where we sort of choose to focus on. Uh, our uh, cha you know, channel for, for writing purposes. That's why we can be so happy. 
Exactly, because this gives us our outlet, our vent, right? But the thing about the, the film and filming the making of the album is it shows people a totally different side of the band, and that is that, you know, we're, it, we have a lot of fun with each other. I mean, there's a genuine love uh, in this band for each other, and it's, uh, it's all for one, and all that cheesy shit that people think like, <laughs> don't really exist anymore, <laughs> that, that's how we roll, pretty much. Yeah. Wait till they see you live, though. Yeah, it's, you it's know what? Better. When I, when I and they'll the opposite again. Yeah. <laughs> when I spit on these guys, man, it's because I love them so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where can global international fans access your music currently to buy CDs and T9 merchandise online through the internet? Well, right now, as far as music goes, um, basically you can download it on any of the major digital distrib uh, distribution sites. You can download this album on. I mean, it's on iTunes, Napster, um, PayPlay. You can, yeah, you can download it through Walmart for crying out loud. Um, as well as uh, we we sell hard copy discs. We're selling them obviously off stage and uh, and through CD Baby. And um, that's been a really that's been a really top notch organization for us as well. I mean, staying the independent route. They've done a fair bit for us and introduced us to a whole bunch of new fans. So it's been. Have it's you been opened uh, any online stores like such as Sazzle.com? for to sell uh, merchandise through the internet? No, we're open to do that no. with Trace9.com. So. Yeah, it's going to be generated through our site. Okay. Yeah, that's that's one of the things we're looking at doing is actually uh, having our site be storefront capable and uh, but as well giving people the opportunity to pay the way that they want. I mean, it's a costly endeavor for bands like us, but we feel it's it's the right step the right, and it's the next step for us. Okay. Before we wrap up our interview, I have a shout out from Gwen Schultz. She says a big hello. <laughs> Hi Gwen. Hey Gwen. <laughs> okay. Is there any last words? You know what? There's a couple of things that I that I wouldn't mind talking about if uh, if you're cool with it. Just quickly. Um, first off, we we'd like to just give a shout out to uh, to our manager right now, Kieran McClellan, who's done a lot of great work for us, and uh, he's you know we just to say that we really appreciate everything he's doing for us and uh, to the lengths that he's gone and we're looking forward to a very prosperous profitable future with him by our side and uh, as well a big shout out to our producer Peter Beauchard who did a great job with us on the album and uh, continues to do some really great things for us whenever we need him to and one other thing I just wanted to bring up and that is um, something that's actually relatively new development for us and that is that right now we're actually in development with, um, with Rob Taz at the 14th Division of uh, the Toronto Police Department. And we're working, uh, we're working on a program right now which is going to target inner-city kids, and its focus is going to be anti-drugs, anti-crime, uh, and pro-community. And it's one of the things, you know, we're obviously a band that's just, you know, we're, we're kind of our platform is growing here, but this is one of those things that we feel we could do to give back. And um, so we're, we're working on this. I can't give you all the details right now. I can tell you there's going to be an official press release in the near future, uh, but it's something really cool and we're really excited about it. And as well, it's going to tie in with a lot of things that we're doing. Uh, there's some really great contests that we're going to be holding on trace9.com in the very near future. Um, as well, we're revamping the website, as I've mentioned here a couple of times, and that's going to be something that everybody should want to participate in it's uh, it's going to be a really community driven site and um and as well a big shout out to mike carparelli at thought on shaft guitars for his continuous support and uh, and to mark smith who's helping us revamp our website as well thank you also to everyone who has followed us for so many years um stood by us patiently loved what we're doing supported us um to everyone who is new to trace nine and everything that is trace nine you know welcome we love it yeah and, uh, you know, friends and family, and as well, Tina, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us and uh, to take such an interest in our in our music and, and enough to actually want to get to know us better. And we hope that uh, that after getting to know us here, you, you know, well, we hope you'll just tell as many people about us as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you got that. I will for sure. And I look forward to your next concert, by the way. Awesome. Thank Thanks, T. Okay, thank you, Trace Nine, for allowing HMTV Canada to interview your band, You Rock. Thank you. Thank you very much, <laughs> HMTV Canada. <laughs>